we're pretty well set to move on into the data section, into the answer section. Answer section. And in the answer section, we'll have a month, which we will number 1 through 48. We'll have an interest payment. We'll have a principal payment. And we'll have a total payments. We'll put a, a zero month just as the beginning, and then we'll have a one, a two, a three. And uh, I just want to forewarn you, I'm going to create this answer section two different ways. One way in which it can only handle a 48-month period, no l shorter and no longer. And then I'll redo it to be able to handle any period from, uh, you know, one month on up to 360 months, which would be 30 years. But once you create a sequence of numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3, Excel will recognize that sequence, so you can highlight it just by holding the shift button down on cell A20 and using the down arrow key. So we've got that highlight, and then you can just drag this down, and we're going to go down to 48, and that will, um, it's not row 48, it's uh, number 48. You see that Excel did that for me, um, which is kind of a nice feature, and I can go end up to get up to the top again. Now the interest payment in any given month will simply be equal to the monthly interest. So all you have to do is just click equals in cell B21. Go up to cell C11. You see that monthly interest appears. Hit enter. That's good. Let's go to the next one. Uh, well, let's first copy this down. Uh, I'll explain my reason uh, here in a moment. But since we've got a formula that we like, and since we've already numbered these rows and they're adjacent, there's actually values in the cells just next to all the way down to row 48, Excel will allow me to put my cursor in the bottom right corner of this formula cell uh, when the crosshairs appear and just double click. And what that did, if I go end down, you see it went all the way down to row 48 and it's been copied, uh, this formula, monthly interest has been copied all the way down. If I go end up and up to the top, I then will need to bring in the principal payment. Now, the, the principal will not be repaid until the very end of the loan. So if I want to get down to that uh, 48th payment, I'm going to move over to column B and go end down, so it'll get me to the very bottom, and then move over one cell, and there I can type in equals, and a hot key to get to the very top would be control home and then I can just now see my principal loan amount click on that and hit enter so all that's happened is I just wound up with a form that says equal principal amount loan amount which is the principal paid to be paid at the end of the loan so I'm going to go end up and uh, I'm back to uh, total payments now total payments in cell D21 would be equal to the prior total payments, which at that point are nothing, plus the sum of any principal payments and any interest payments, and therefore those are your total payments. And this we would have to drag down to row 48 because there isn't anything in the adjacent cells to get that right. So assuming you've got that, um, you can see here at the bottom the total cumulative payments is 28,000. That's effectively our check figure from up above, so let's go up again, end up and we can now create our check figure. So here our total payments were computed algebraically and then we're going to deduct I'm going to click here on D21 end down cell D68 and hit enter. And as you can see uh, it winds up to be zero. And what that means is we've just reconciled algebraically our computation of total payments with the detail of those total payments and the check figure uh, reconciles. Now, a good habit to get into when you're reconciling figures from different areas on a spreadsheet is to use conditional formatting. Now, conditional formatting is a method by which you can um, have this cell be formatted in a different way if um, to meet certain criteria. For example, let's say the check figure, let's say this was wrong. I'm going to go ahead and add maybe $10,000 so this won't reconcile. So right now, uh, the check figure is 10,000. It should be zero, so that there's a problem. 
maybe I want that to turn yellow uh, text and red background if the check figure doesn't turn out to be close to zero. So I'm going to go ahead and um, use what's called conditional formatting. You'll notice it's just over here on the screen. I'm going to drag it over a little bit. It's on the um, it's on the home ribbon, and it's a little bit to the right uh, under styles, and you'll see conditional formatting. So I'm going to have to click on that. Maybe I'll even drag this over a little bit to bring it onto the screen. Bring my styles onto the screen. I hope that'll fit. Yeah. So you see now I've brought this over a little bit. This will look differently than a little bit different than what you see, but big idea is on the home screen under styles you should see conditional formatting. And since I'm now currently on cell uh, C15, I want to conditionally format this cell if it meets the rule that uh, the check figure is not equal to zero. Okay. So we're going to do this. We're going to write a new rule. And on this new rule, we will format only cells that contain a cell value that is between, let's say, a minus 0.01. No, let's say it's not between. It's not between. So in other words, if it's not less than a one penny difference, we want it to be formatted. So 0.01 minus and uh, 0.01 positive. And we're now going to click on the format here. Click on the format, and we want uh, maybe it to be bolded. I'm on font. I want it to be bolded. I want the color of the text to be yellow. Okay, so I went to font style, bolded it, went to color, chose yellow but that would be pretty difficult to read as you can imagine. So let's go to the Fill tab and let's choose the Fill effect, which is the background in the cell, to be red. And you can see this is what it will look like if the check figure doesn't reconcile effectively to zero and we hit OK. Now as you can see right now it doesn't reconcile, so we would have to go back and research why it doesn't reconcile. Let's see. Um, all we see now, oops, all we see now that it's equal to total payments. But the check figure shouldn't be equal to total payments. It should be equal to total payments minus, and then once again, let's go down to uh, the bottom of total payments here, which is row D68. Click it, hit enter, and uh, we see it's still not reconciled. So we'd have to ask yourself, why is that? Well, if I look at the math here, it's 8,000, 20,000, that should be 28,000. As you can see, we still have the $10,000 in there, and that helped us to catch an error in our spreadsheet. We delete that, and it's back to reconciled. And as you can see, uh, there is no conditional formatting going on right now because it does reconcile. In fact, you could even turn it green if it does reconcile, turn it red if it doesn't. Uh, you can do a couple conditional formats on the same cell if you want to. But we'll um, maybe put um, top and double bottom borders, so if you want to do that, you can go up to font and choose borders, and you have a top and double bottom border, and I think we're pretty good there.